Joining us now, it's the uh, she has been now at JMU for a decade. This is her fifth season as the head coach, fresh off, of course, that incredible, magical uh, Women's College World Series appearance, which caught the nation by storm. I speak of Lauren Laporte, joins us now, the head coach here on In the Circle. Welcome back, Coach. Well, it's good to be back. Um, we've had lots of great conversations, so thanks for having me. Yeah, it's, you know, it's too bad that nothing ever happens when, you know, is going on when you come on. Only, you know, the last, first time we had you on the show was right as we found out Megan Good was out for the year, as we were talking about. And then last season we had you during what was it like dealing with a COVID protocol. The good, And now uh, we got lots of news going on with uh, your JMU Athletics in general. Let's start with the news on Saturday that took place, which was official, that JMU will be moving to the Sunbelt Conference, accepted the bid, the state approved it. Uh, and you will be a member of the Sun Belt in the future. What was your reaction to uh, to the news now that you'll be moving to the Sun Belt? Um, you know, overall, it's great for our university. Um, you know, our football program moving from FCS to FBS, it's a big move for us. And I think we're all excited as an athletic department um, and, and as a university. Um, and the Sun Belt Conference in softball is very, very strong. And so that's also exciting. You know, I was out recruiting this weekend and ran into a ton of um, the Sun Belt coaches, and they were so welcoming and great to talk to and, and gave me their numbers and said they need anything. So that's always a little uh, reassuring um, to, to join a conference and be wanted um, and have those that, you know, support you. So I think it is a wonderful move, and I think overall this this place is electric and excited right now. I would say so. I watched the press conference on Saturday, and Keith Gill, the you know the commissioner of the Sun Belt, highlighted the softball program as a big part reason. I mean, certainly for the one of the reasons for the move, and he was excited about the move. And certainly Jeff Bourne, the AD, mentioned it. Uh, softball came up often in that press conference, which doesn't happen often in those type of press conferences, and it shows that your program has made a big impact and has helped the university make this jump. Absolutely. You know, I think a lot of times JMU and, and maybe I'm just living my own little world, but we're kind of known as a softball school as well. That doesn't mean that a lot of universities are you know, our president, our whole administration, of course, our athletic department administration has always supported softball and, and really gives them. Um, so it's very exciting when they do have those big press conferences that we are, you know, involved with that in, in the thoughts. And um, as a coach, you know, very proud of, of where we are um, and going into such a strong softball conference. Uh, a super strong conference. It's coming off a four-bid league. It includes the Raisin Cajuns, who, like you, have been to the Women's College World Series. You've got South Alabama. you got Troy, uh, you, you know, Texas State. I mean, this is a – and, I, you know, I've said this on the show, and I'm not just saying it's just your odd, but, you know, when this kind of started speculating, people were starting to throw this out there. I'm like, this could be a top five league for years to come. This could be a power conference in softball. Absolutely. Uh, and I think that's what it's going to I mean, you mentioned those schools, but there's other schools in there that are have really improved over the last three to four years. Um, so we might, you know, see even more. So it's very exciting. Um, and it, it will be very different, you know, for us, just the whole transition and moving to a conference. But like I said before, I feel like so many people have reached out and asked if we need anything. Um, and and that's 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 the most important part when you're transitioning and, and to have that support um, throughout this whole process. For your program now, what does this this move is going to be, you know, down the road? Does, when does that like the transitional period there? Is that something does that affect your program? Is that big of a deal? Is it not that big of an adjustment? Like what what kind of uh, how does this affect your program here moving forward? Yeah, I mean, I think scheduling might be a little bit different, um, you know, being that there's so many teams that are, you know, high RPI. So you have to think about that when you schedule um, and, and making sure you still have, RP, you know, high RPI on the schedule. Um, but just kind of doing that a little bit different. Obviously, the travel is going to be the biggest difference for, for us and, and trying to figure those things out with flights and because um, we've never really, to be completely honest, we have not played a lot of teams in the Sun Belt um, as, as far as their facilities. Um, I think Coastal Carolina um, and maybe App State back in 2014, but we haven't we haven't been to a lot of these places. So just kind of the familiarity with that 
Um, I think it's going to be big and trying to figure out the travel plans and then the flights because we we don't fly a whole lot. So um, I think that's going to be the biggest transition um, and just understanding, you know, how the league works. Every every league's a little bit different and, and their policies and the way they do things. So really getting familiar with that. The other big thing with the Sun Belt is they have a deal with ESPN. A lot of their softball is on the ESPN Plus, including the Sun Belt tournament, which I've seen uh, I'd covered. Uh, I, Jeff Bourne, your AD, mentioned that he spoke to ESPN's Lee Fitting, who's a higher up at ESPN. This is huge for your program from a coverage and exposure standpoint. You, we saw it up close last year during your postseason one, what that can mean in a small sample size in a big stage. Now you're going to have even more exposure down the road here. Right. And, you know, with exposure comes recruiting. Um, you know, I, it is the first time I've been to the West Coast um, in all my years of coaching where people didn't ask me what JMU was and, and where was it. Um, and that was all because of, you know, what we were able to do in the media exposure. Um, it, it's so big now and it's what people do 85 percent of the time <laughs> is, is looking on their phones and seeing what's going on. Um, so. Uh, yeah, it, it's very exciting um, to get our program kind of um, a little bit more exposed during the regular season. Um, that's going to be huge for all of the, the sports programs here. Now, the other news that has come as a result of this, and it came out last week, in the, and it's been made official since the, the Colonial Athletic Conference. They had this rule like since two decades ago where they basically now, a school that's leaving the conference or is about to leave the conference cannot participate in the conference postseason. This is for all sports. Uh, take us through this. How would you, how were you all told about this? Were you aware that this was coming and just kind of your overall reaction? Cause this has become a national story, uh, uh, across the board. Yeah. I mean, we knew, um, it was in the bylaws, but given everything that our student athletes across the country have been through with the COVID year and, um, losing, season, um, all the other, a lot of other schools who have, you know, have had movement, um, you know, have filled out the waiver um, and, you know, the presidents of, of that particular um, conference um, have, have voted that they can still compete. Um, and so, you know, we were we were confident. Um, and then we found out, you know, last week um, that that wasn't the case and we didn't get enough votes. And, um, you know, I think. It, it is very unfortunate and um, you feel for the student athletes because it, this is their careers, you know, and, and they don't get to go back and, and do anything over. So um, it's tough and it's it's really tough for the fall sports. Um, and that's who I kind of feel for right now. I'm taking myself out of the picture and, and looking at the bigger picture. And that's that's what's so hard because, you know, we have two programs that were going into their conference tournament next week and, and they were ranked, you know, number one or tied for first. And I, I really feel for those athletes right now. You know, for us as spring sports, we can uh, still receive an at-large and, and figure out our schedules to maybe do that. It's still very difficult. I mean, I, I think especially as a major, getting an at-large bid is not is not always is not easy. Um, but for me, I'm, I I feel for the student athletes. But we've been through a lot of adversity. Um, you know, last year um, we could only play 32 ball. I mean, we only played 32 ball games. We we had a schedule where we couldn't. Um, you know, we were limited in our number of games, and uh, we figured out. You know, we figured it out. We handled the adversity and we moved on. And that's kind of what we're talking to our team about. Like we want them to have a voice. And but you know, there's sometimes in life where things like this happen, and, and, it, and it's not fair and it's not right. But you can't you can't dwell on the past. Like you have to move on and get through it and, and overcome it. And that's kind of the message that we're talking to our team about but it is unfortunate for the fall sports at this point especially yeah for the fall sports because they just literally got blindsided like the, this came out of nowhere at least not that it makes it feel any better but at least for the spring sport now you can kind of prepare uh for it uh assuming that common sense does not happen and, and they change their mind or something like that happens because this is I mean, you have to at least, I, I would imagine the, the athletes feel appreciated that the national media, you know, a lot of the national media and a lot of the people in the, in the, in the country are kind of supporting your student athletes saying, and, you know, and supporting, saying, no, this is wrong. Right. And we have a lot of support. And I think, you know, all those people, you know, not just in the softball world, um, but just in the athletic world, um, you know, it's so, it's one of those things that it is a lot about the student athlete experience. You know, it, it does the experience a little bit, but. Like I said, it, it, we have to move on from, from it and, and figure out other ways. So you mentioned what you've been telling your team about this. So what is the approach now for you and this team? I would imagine, you know, it's a young team as we'll get into in a little bit. But at the same time, I mean, if I was an athlete in this situation there, I would probably have a bit of a chip on my shoulder, kind of like, you know, feel, dis you know, a little slighted. I mean, how do you kind of 
you know, kind of manage that of players that are probably going to have a chip on the show, but at the same time, you don't want that to get too carried over and affect your play. So how do you, how do you approach this now with your team moving forward? Yeah. I mean, I think it's important to inform our team, all the facts um, they know um, that, you know, they have to play very well and uh, games that, you know, are RPI and we have to win the games we need, we should win. Um, there's not a lot of messing around. And, you know, hopefully they can handle that because it is a lot more difficult. Um, and, you know, it's going to be similar to the same um, messages last year. We knew, um, given the limited number of games, we didn't have a shot in that large. We didn't. And, you know, I feel like as a program, we've always tried to set ourselves up that if something did happen in the tournament, we set ourselves up to, to possibly get an at large. We didn't have that opportunity last year. We knew going into the year we weren't going to have that opportunity. So, um, you know, it, it's kind of it's kind of reversed almost. <laughs> um, we just don't have the opportunity to play in the conference tournament. Um, and that's kind of how um, you have to think of it. You know, every game's going to matter, and every game's got to be like your championship game. And uh, you've got to have that mindset. There is no taking off. There is not – there's no going through the motions. Um, and – it is going to be a lot more difficult with a younger team. Like you just mentioned, they don't even understand sometimes the art that the, the at large and, and where you are. So we're, you know, it's important to educate them. On that. I almost feel like you almost treat this like some of the other conferences that don't have a conference tournament. You almost have to just pretend you there's no conference tournament. You're going out to win the regular season championship. That's what you could control. And you make a statement that way as well as obviously in the non-conference, but the good news is for your young roster that, that this is kind of like, hey, there's no, you can't take any games off. Like, you know, you're going to be a target, which, you know, to begin with, but you can't take any games off. Every game matters because there is no quote unquote conference postseason to worry about. So, in a way, is that the approach as well? Is you almost treat it like there is no conference tournament. And like you've said, you're used to having that thin margin for room for error there. Correct. I mean, that's, that's exactly it. And, and that's exactly what we'll talk to them about. Um, and there are a lot of conferences um, that don't have it. So, um, you know, they had to kind of get in that mindset. And uh, that's the goal. You know, um, control what you can control, like you just said. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've only, you know, it's amazing what's going on here. This is your fifth season. <laughs> it's amazing what you've, I mean, I don't think there's been a, a textbook on how to handle some of the things you've had to handle since you're, you took over from, you know, your Megan Good being out for the year on the, you know, right before the season. And Hannah, you mentioned you've had a lot of like different adversities that not many coaches in the country can even say they've ever had to deal with what it, have you have you kind of wondered like man there's like i didn't know this job had like a plot twist like it apparently it does it, no it's so funny that you say that because my husband like said the same thing like two years ago like pre-covid and he was like lauren you have gone through so much that coaches that are 40 years in have never even had to go so honestly i feel like it's grounded me and um I feel like I can take a lot of adversity and challenges <laughs> at this point. Um, there have been things that you can't even make up. I, I'm like, did that just happen? Okay, well, we'll deal with it. And I think the thing for me and um, my thought and, and kind of how we talk to the team as a staff is always try to find the positive out of the negatives. You know? And that's how you have to think of things. And, uh, you know, that never that never back down mentality. Um, you know, there have been been a lot of things happen in my year, um, but you know, being able to handle the hard is the biggest thing and getting through it. Um, and this is just another thing that happened that we have to get. And, um, yeah, it's 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 definitely been an interesting few years. <laughs> it's unbelievable, but it's been a positives, and of course. Everybody, of course, will think through this past season, making that trip to the Women's College World Series. I'm curious, what has it been like for you this offseason? I would imagine you've had a lot of coaches come up to you and congratulate you. Have you noticed anything different? What, what's it been like for you this offseason as you've made the recruiting uh, you know, trips, and which is obviously great to have back, by the way. But what has it been like now since this run? Because people still talk about this, and they're going to be talking – look, they're going to be talking about this run forever and, and a lot – not just in softball circles, but outside of softball circles. As I mentioned, this was a, a highlight of the press conference on Saturday. Right. Well, I think for us as a team um, and in talking to our players, uh, they, they almost get, they are almost like famous a little bit um, locally, you know, um, you know, they go to the grocery store 
and uh, they wear their JMU softball shirts and people stop them and just want to hear about, about what it was like. And I think that's, you know, just the, the conversations and the amount of um, people reaching out and just want to hear about the experience and, and how it was all done um, has been the biggest difference for us as a staff too. We've had a lot more uh, public speaking engagements <laughs> that we've been asked to do. And, um, and you know, I love to do those, uh, but I'm, it's, I'm definitely getting a little bit more comfortable with that because that's something that, you know, when I first started I was, you know, as an assistant, not really in that that limelight a lot so um but it's been good I mean just the amount of support not even in the softball world but just people in sports in general you know the professional athletes professional you know coaches um it, it's kind of been neat to see the impact um that we we had a lot of people. Um, and I think that's what's so awesome about sports is just having you know those Cinderella teams that maybe aren't always the most talented, but find other ways to get it done. And let me tell you, there's there's a lot of things that this team did. Yes, they were good ball players, but I've I've never coached a team that was able to handle what they handled and did it together. And then that's kind of the message that, you know, we talk about. It, it wasn't that we just were really good on the field. Um, it took a lot more to be able to get where we got. And um, I, hopefully, you know, being that a lot of those left you know they were veteran players and they had been through a lot and they figured it out um now our our leaders and our upperclassmen kind of have taken from that and kind of you know, influencing that in the in the young ones but it takes time i mean and that's the thing that people have to understand this stuff doesn't happen overnight culture doesn't happen overnight every single year our team is different and and the dynamic is very different um and you're forming you know a new family almost so just kind of you know continuing with um life Sports world, there's at our team here that brought us together. Has there been a person that's reached out to you that even kind of blew you away? That that may not even be in softball, may not even be in sports. Just somebody that reached out to congratulate you and say what a great run they, they enjoyed. That that even kind of surprised you. Like wow, that I can't believe that person reached out to me. I would say Ron Rivera. Um, after we beat um, Oklahoma. He sent um, a personalized text to me um, and talked about how his players were watching it and getting excited about it. And, um, you know, we had a lot of great stories. Um, you know, we had started, you know, our seniors who had never started in their careers um, earn a starting spot and made such an impact. Um, you know, Lindsay Meeks was, was one of them and, and what she was able to do. Um, and, and she was not only just, you know, a starter and a good player, but she was the glue to our team. She was our hype man. Um, and she took on so many roles in, in her senior year. It was unbelievable. But I would say, you know, Ron just taking the time, all the stuff he has to deal with as, as you know, an NFL coach and all of the health, you know, things through for him to take the, the time and send me a 15 minute video message um, was it blew me away. Um, and yes, he has some relationship to the softball world because his daughter played you know, at UCLA and, and played growing up. So he a little bit of a um, but he didn't have to do that. And I um, respect him. And, you know, I've been a Cowboys fan all my life. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm deep down uh, cheering for the Washington football team because of, of that. So hopefully we can get up to it. But there's so many professional athletes that, you know, reached out and kind of bought in because they all understood. Everybody's kind of been in that underdog role at some point in their life or in their career. So they know it takes a lot more um, sometimes. So that was cool. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's a pretty cool deal there. Ron Rivera is a great guy, and you're right. You're going to have to go up there to check them out of Washington a little bit. When you look back at that run last year, when you look back on this, because this obviously you, this is going to be a special bond with that team. You'll do anniversaries and, and, and get-togethers and things like that. What's the first thing that's going to come to your mind when you look back at last year? The relationships. Um, you know, it, it is so hard as a coach. I mean, we had three super seniors that were with us five, for five years, and you're with them every day almost. And, and they become like, you know, your own kids. And that's what I think that's what's been harder for me than any year is we were we were with each other so long and so much in those four weeks because as we were on the road, you know, all of the postseason. Um, and just 
they're gone like that. And they, and they go and start their own lives and, and just maintaining those relationships. But we actually just had our ring ceremony um, last weekend. And, and just that love, um, when they came back, just that love and um, closeness um, was all back together again, you know, um, and just tell them the stories. And, and I think that's the biggest thing, just do, you know, the memories. And as a coach, I really tried to tell the girls because there's so many championships and so many postseasons that I've been in and that our staff has been in where everything's happening so fast and, and you forget to just like enjoy the moments. And I think for the first time in my career, we've gotten to the postseason and I've just, I still remember the, the feeling and the, and the memories um, of a lot of things that happened. And, you know, in a coach's mind, sometimes they just can't remember anything because <laughs> everything's like a whirlwind. Your head's on a swivel and, and you're always thinking about what's next, what's next, what's next. And I really think, you know, as a team as a, and as a staff, we really enjoyed what we were able to do in the moments. And it's nice to still be able to remember that feeling. And I hope stays with me for a long time and you know obviously the videos and the pictures always help bring a lot of that back um but it, it yeah I just I miss them you know and, and I think that's the hardest part as a coach so yeah having those anniversaries and get togethers are going to be very important you know I just spoke to Mickey Dean who told me the story he was driving up to Virginia and he stopped to watch that Missouri game that last game of the Missouri game and he said he got nervous it got emotional there because he's watching Odyssey. He's hoping he holds on because he knows, of you know, obviously you all been there together a long time building that program. He, you know, they you all envision this day happening, but it's yeah. still there was a lot of roadblocks there. And he said he got emotional just thinking yeah. of all the hard work that you've done and the staff's done and the players and everything. At any point, did it get emotional for you just knowing what, you know, you've been there now a decade going through all those steps and all the blocks and being so close, knocking on the door. Did it ever like at, at any point, did it tell you, wow, we, you know, this is amazing. All this hard work's paid off. Yeah. And, and it, it was a lot of knocking at the door. Um, and I think it takes, it takes a lot more. Like it takes everybody that's part of the program to really be on board and push the door down. You know, it's not just a couple people. It's not just the 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 senior class. I mean, it takes everyone from top to bottom, and that's one thing that I've learned. Um, you know, this yes, you want the players buy in, but you got to have everybody else. You got to have the support staff. Um, you know, your administration, um, the fans, and everybody just gave us the momentum um, to push the door down. And and I feel like, and this is kind of obvious, but I think we were one of the oldest teams in the postseason. Um, and I think that made a big difference. I'm not going to lie. Like they were tired of getting there and, and not, you know, or not and, and getting, and getting through. And I think they realized for the first time it done the postseason experience more than anybody else that we were playing. We were older than Tennessee. We were older than Missouri. I think that that played a big part of it. And just that mindset of I've done this way more <laughs> than anybody else in the postseason so just that experience you know obviously um helps a lot but you know with coach Dean I mean he's 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 my best friend and I would not be where I am without him and we still talk a lot um and you know I I actually asked him um after we beat Oklahoma State I'm like where are you you know um and he was like I've gone back and forth so many times but you know I I give him a lot of respect he didn't want anything to be about him you know and you know as good as I do like if he was there, the cameras would go to him, yeah. you know? And, um, yeah, I mean, he had a big part in getting the, the seniors and the super seniors here. And he just did not want that, you know, him, his name to be associated with it all. Even though everybody down knows how much he did for this program. So, um, just, just having still as a big part is, is important. That's incredible. Yeah, and he mentioned that. And, obviously, uh, it, it, you were one of the most experienced teams. And now – you know, you go from having one of the most experienced teams to one of the most inexperienced teams now as we kind of turn the page to the fall. I think you have like, I think I looked up your roster, 17 of your 22 players are freshmen or sophomores. So what what's the approach here with a young team, knowing that, you know, you had this hoopla, the veterans that are coming back, you know, they've been celebrated, but now you've got this young team and you're almost kind of starting over. So how, how what has that been like this fall for you to have this young roster? 
Um, yeah, I mean, and, and what we've been trying to tell this team, this is this is a whole new team. Yes, like what we did was amazing last year, but we had to move on from it. And you, I think the hardest part is the, for the freshmen um, is trying to, you know, they, they're living it a little bit and they really weren't here. And I think that's what's hard because they get stopped a lot and asked and, you know, I, I, there's that pressure. And, it, you know, I can't say that there's no pressure on them. Um, just to, to live in the shoes of, of a lot of the, the upperclassmen, but they have to be, you know, um, tough, mentally tough when it comes to that. And, and they're here for a reason and they have to know why they're here. And, um, you know, they have to make their, they have to have their own identity. Um, that's what's going to be very important. Um, and I think the, the upperclass have done a good job at not really talking about last year a whole lot. Like, yes, we're going to, you know, keep our culture strong and, and then the things that we believe in, um, in our philosophies, but last year was last year and, uh, we have to be our own team this year. So, um, yeah, there's always a transition when you have that many seniors and we had that many seniors that were big time starters. So when it comes to that, that experience, as far as the starting, the, you know, starters and, and just the pressure that they've, they've just, this team hasn't really been through that. So just trying to get them, um, in pressure situations as much as we can in the off season and fall games and things like that's going to be very important um, because they're going to be thrown into the fire. Um, like you said earlier, we have big targets on our back, but um, you know, we, we can't think about that. We just have to play our game and stay who we are. We're speaking with Lauren Laporte, JMU head coach here on in the circle. Let's talk about your pitching staff because JMU that's always been pitching. Uh, and obviously Odyssey Alexander who really kind of, has become a well-known name even outside of softball. It's amazing how many times she's come up in non-softball activities. She came up in that Saturday presser. She's come up in a lot of different uh, topics. Uh, what an incredible run. Before we talk about your pitchers here, just talk about her because I thought she handled herself so well in the spotlight. Uh, handled all the media you know, sessions there. You were there with her a lot. Just talk, speak to her and how she's hand her handled herself there because – I mean, she's going to be remembered forever. When people think of JMU, she's going to be probably the first name that people think of as far as a player is concerned. Absolutely. You know, I think the biggest thing that I was so proud of um, as a coach is it's not even what she was able to do, but how she did it. Um, she, me and her are very similar when it comes to talking to the press and doing interviews. Um, we're not always the most comfortable in doing it, but I think together we have learned to just be who we are and not try to say things that really aren't us in the, in the right way. Um, I think grown up and matured um, so much and have, has learned a lot and been through so much adversity. I mean, you name it, she's been through it. And uh, I think she, you know, she, she figured it out and she figured it out at the right time. And, and I'm, I'm so happy that so much good has come out of, of everything that she's been through. Um, and, is I mean she's doing so much outside of softball and it's incredible to have conversations with her now um because I was worried I'm always worried that when they graduate I'm like okay are they ready are, are they truly ready <laughs> for this real world um because we we um we sometimes help them too much you know where we they they have a lot of resources and they don't have to do a lot of things on their own um when they're here and we, we give them a lot and um scares me sometimes when they go out on their own and they got to figure it out um and she has figured it out and uh I'm, I'm just so happy to see that and um to be able to do what she did for us and continue to do it it's going to be very important for her um you know I talk to her a lot we're actually um going to be in a Christmas parade in the city of Richmond very soon as the Grand Marshal so um <laughs> yeah <laughs> wow that's unbelievable like that. um, yeah so we're excited about that but she um She's grown up, and um, and and that's what I'm so uh, so proud of is how she represents, you know, her herself and her family, and, and this whole university. Grand Marshal, wow, that, that's uh, yeah. that's incredible. <laughs> there, uh, the good news is you have pitchers coming back and talented pitchers, and and your program has always been like that. One great, you have one great pitcher, the next one is right behind them. You know, I remember when I first started covering your program, had Jalen Ford, and I'll never forget. In seeing him in person in uh, 2015, you threw out this freshman by the name of Megan Good. She turned out pretty good. And then, oh, yeah, there's this next one, Odyssey. And you got another one here, Alyssa Humphrey, Alexis Bermudez. 
coming back. Just talk about them because they are coming back. They have experience and will probably have to, you know, lead your staff. Yeah, they will. And, and you know, the nice thing about uh, last year, and a lot of people didn't really know this because we didn't play a lot of games. So we, we didn't have a lot of coverage going on in our regular season. But, you know, CC was injured um, last year with a torn hamstring. She did not play. I mean, she was out for five to six weeks. So Aly Alyssa and Alexis carried a lot of the load there in, in the middle of the season. Um, and they had to figure it out. And um, I was almost glad that happened. And, you know, when CC came back, they handled themselves so well. Like, everybody had the same goal and the same mission. And, you know, with CC coming back, she was she was healthy. She was rested. She had her legs, you know, with her. And um, they at no point did the staff do this. You know, they never had any tension. They supported each other. And I think that's the hardest part when you have a staff is them all, you know, supporting each other's successes um, and celebrating it. And I feel like, you know, both Alyssa and Alexis did that. And so glad that things under their belt because I knew in, in, in the back of my mind this year was going to be you know their year to kind of do um you know what CC was able to do in the postseason so I think that's going to be very important um you know for them and just having that experience and you pitched Humphrey even in the postseason as well which I think will be valuable coming into this season to have that experience what do you have seen from the two of them, at the, you know, as far as this fall and then other, uh, you know, arms that you'll have behind them that uh, certainly have youth, but I'm sure talent. Yeah, for Alyssa, um, you know, to, to have that postseason pressure, I mean, we put her in to some pretty tight situations. And we went to and had her in against Liberty. That was not easy. I mean, we were up one or two runs, fifth inning. Um, CC needed a break and like she did what she needed to do. Um, got out of the, might have been up four runs. She might have got out of the inning with one run. Um, but she, in the World Series and, and at Missouri, um, we, we put her in. And then with Alexis, you know, she's a transfer from Bethune Cookman. Um, so she, her team down there, uh, through a ton of them. Um, so she had to figure it out as well uh, of how to take care of them. Um, so so a lot of both of them have a good postseason experience. So, um, you know, I think that's going to be very important for them to kind of help each other through it and complement each other. And then we have freshmen um, who, you know, hopefully can soak up some innings. I think they're ready and they're working hard. Um, so excited about that as well and then having some depth. Offensively, obviously, you lose a lot of talent. Uh, too many to name, right? Offhand, I mean, you, you know, people know the names by now that they got familiar with Kate Gordon, all the other great players. You lose your outfield. Who are, do you have a vocal leader right now on that side of the returners? Is that still evolving? Um, I think, I think Hallie Hall, um, and Lauren Burnett, who was our freshman catcher last year, um, did such a good job as a freshman handling it. Yes, she wasn't the vocal leader, but man, I mean, she she did a lot in, in the way she ha handled things and her demeanor, um, and she's stepped outside of her shell and, and, and has been able to speak up. And Emily Phillips and, and Reed Butler, um, you know, are, are doing really well and have figured out, okay, my turn, let's go. So excited about that. have been with the program for a long time, and they, they we do. And it's their time to step up and, and get it done. Of the new faces, there's a lot of them, and obviously you're still kind of forming, trying to figure out the puzzle, where, who's playing where and, and competing, which obviously creates a lot of competition internally. But who are some of the new faces that, you know, JMU fans will get kind of familiar with and you think will contribute in some, you know, this season? Yeah. The nice thing about our freshman class is they are a lot of utility players. They're very versatile and I feel like I can put them there. Um, and that's kind of what we wanted. We didn't just one dimensional players that can only play this position. Um, honestly, the majority of them can play the infield and the outfield. So that's kind of nice. Now it's just figuring out who's better in certain situations. Um, you know, I think Isabel Fishman, um, she is um, from California, played with the USA, um, USA Athletics. Um, you know, she's she's had a great fall for us and, and really stepped up. She's very mature as a freshman. She's also pitching. Um, so she's playing the outfield and pitching and hitting. And that's always, you know, difficult. Um, we have 
Rogers, who's kind of doing the same thing. Um, she's a she's a hitter uh, pitcher for us. Um, and then some middles, you know, are Morgan Maceras, um, Josie Polk, um, Jasmine Hall, that are kind of all fighting uh, for a position as well. Um, and and we have a lot of other freshmen that that are competing, um, which which is always good. That's what you want. Um, and, you know, that's I don't know where they're going to be yet. And and I guess that's the exciting part because um, they're all working extremely hard. It's probably the freshman class, it's probably the most hard, hardest working group we've had. In freshman class. Sometimes it takes them a little while to figure it out and realize they have to do some things, you know, on their own because this is a very repetitious sport. You know, you have to, you can't just take off three or four days, <laughs> especially when you get into individuals um, and, and, and think that you're going to come back, you know, polished. So they're doing a really good job at, at asking questions, coming into the office, you know, wanting to learn. That's going important for, for this team as a coaching staff you have a young roster patience i would is, is that a <laughs> word that that you're gonna have to repeat yourself throughout this i mean what's it like when you have a young staff is patience gonna be a key here knowing that there are gonna be some ups and downs and some bumps in the road patience has already been um a word that i've had to use <laughs> a lot <laughs> <laughs> but dude, you get spoiled um you know when you have such a heavy upperclassmen group because it's things that you don't even realize that you have to teach all over. Just, I mean, just about the game, like cuts and, and how to cover the bag and how to make tags, like little things that you kind of taken for granted. Um, and it's so funny. I mean, coach Herzig and I will come walk in from practice and we're like, Holy cow. Like we have to really, everything, the everything's a little bit different and how we have to plan things and, and go over things. Um, and we have to be a lot more detailed, um, and, and what we do. And uh, yeah, it, patience is definitely the number one word uh, for us as a staff. This year. I, I bet. I'm, I'm curious, which aspect of the game is the one that I wouldn't say you worry about, but you're obviously you're curious to get some answers sooner than later. Is it on the offensive end as far as a lineup or or is it defensively? Definitely the offensive part. Um, you know, you it's very hard to get them ready for what division one is going to be like the speed of the game um also is, is very different um and but yeah the offensive part just trying to get a rhythm um you know like this lineup is completely different um and just finding the right rhythms and who who's going you know who's better after this person who's better in this spot that's what we're trying to figure out and it's so hard sometimes in the fall to even know that you know it's all it sometimes takes you know a few games in to really start dialing that in because in the fall yeah we play games but it's very different for what the spring's like um you don't have that extra added pressure of you know having to win every game um the fall's a little more laid back even though we try not to make it that it is you know mindset wise so just trying to figure out our offensive rhythm I think it's going to be the biggest adjustment Conference-wise, you know, last season was kind of unique, even in the scheduling in the conference format with divisions. I think I remember when we had John. I think you joked like you played with team teams like six times, which is kind of weird, uh, and things like that. Uh, and the way the schedules kind of played out. What what is the conference regular season schedule going to look like? What's going to be the format from that standpoint? Yeah, so um, you know, the eighteen games we're playing every team in the conference, so there's no division. Or it's, it's going back to, you know, the regular format of, um, you know, us going um, to four places and then, you know, teams come to us. So that's kind of, kind of gone back to normal and how it's been in the past. Um, you know, our preseason schedule is very difficult. Um, I will say that. Um, but, you know, I think it's good. I mean, we've always had that philosophy. Even when we first got to JMU, we were obviously young and um, we, we threw them in the fire early. If we, if we You know, if we take take the beatings, we take the beatings and we learn from it. I think that's the only way um, to get teams prepared for what it's going to be like in the postseason. And um, yeah, I mean, we're, you know, we, we're used to um, doing that. It's just making sure the players can handle it. Um, and we, we haven't released our schedule yet. We usually don't, I know, December, because things come up always at the end of the fall and I hate getting it printed. <laughs> And then it changing so it changes, so I wait to the last possible minute to do it to to, to release it. But I think it's going to be a good schedule, and I'm excited about it. But yeah, conference, you know, it's going to be the same format. 
Well, and you've told me in the past about scheduling. You want to schedule tough. You want to find out about your team. You're, you know, learn some things right away. You don't want to wait till halfway through the year to find out some issues that you might have. Hey, you might have, you might take some, you know, lumps early, but you'll know what you got to work on and improve on, and you'll be better off for it in the long in the long run. And I would imagine that's the same here, especially with a young a young new roster, basically. I mean, yeah, I think I think it's very important to not, you know, um, to for them to see what the high level of ball is and and see it from the gate um, because sometimes when when you're successful and and you're not playing your high, at the highest level you kind of take off a little bit you know you get complacent and definitely don't want this team um, to get complacent at all. Two last things, and we spoke about this actually at Oklahoma City, the state of Virginia in softball. It's just been a high level with your success, your program. Obviously, Virginia Tech's got success there. They got to the Super Regionals. All the great teams like Liberty, you know, all these great teams in Division One, but also in all different levels. Uh, Brandon Elliott winning the national championship, who's your friend there at Virginia Wesley. He's built like a, a an incredible program there at D3. Uh, just speak of the state of Virginia, because I don't know if people, you know, when people think of softball and the, the rich talent, they always think, you know, California, Florida, Texas, but I think Virginia is making a, a loud statement here in recent in the last couple of years here that the softball level at all levels is as good as any in the country. Yeah, I mean, there is so many good ball players coming out of the state of Virginia right now. And I don't, you know, people have asked me from all over the country, like, why? And I don't re I don't necessarily if I know if I know the why. Um, it's just a lot of excitement with with the game. Um, and there's a lot of great pitchers. Um, if you kind of take a look, um, especially in the ACC, um, there's so many at the top programs in the ACC, all of them are Virginia pitchers. Um, and it's, I mean, that's very exciting because obviously in our sport, <laughs> you got to have pitching. Um, and if you don't, you're not going to go very far. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know the reason why, but it's, it's very exciting that um, the, the young um, athletes want to play this sport and, and, they, and they go all in with it. Um, and they work really hard um, in the state. Um, they, they get their their lessons in and they're doing stuff on their own and they're they're lifting um, and getting getting bigger, stronger, even and that doesn't always happen. You know, there have been some years, and especially in the past, that you know, kids have come in and never even been in a weight room. Um, the buy-in for for you know being a high level softball player is big in the state right now. Has it always been that? Rich, since you got to the state, have been recruiting in the state, or was there a turning point where something turned the corner? I mean, at what when did this happen? I guess in the state of Virginia, has it was there a turning point? Or has it always been like that since you can remember? Yeah, I mean, since I can remember, probably, I don't know, probably in the last eight, seven, eight, really. Been, if you kind of ask other coaches, um, I mean, when I go recruiting, I, I, I mean. There have been times these small local tournaments going on in Virginia, and there's teams from across the country, and I'm just like, what are you doing here? You know, you just don't see them very often. <laughs> and, I mean, it happened two weekends ago, and they're like, well, you got all these pitchers coming out of here. We got to figure out what's going on. You know, we got to – and I'm like, well, that's true. You know, when I take a – you know, look at the teams that have finished, you know, in the top 25, I mean, there's a lot of Virginia pitchers on the, on the top 25 teams. I'm like, okay. Um, but, yeah, I'd say – in the last few years, um, the Virginia, the caliber of, of players um, have been have been really good. And it's I don't been, know, I don't know the reason. I, I really, I can't give you that answer because I don't know. <laughs> but I would imagine it was part of the reason why, when you were offered the head coaching job, you probably are, you like it here. You you realize what you have around you, that what you can build here, not just from the support from obviously your administrators and the school, but just. In the state, you don't, you know what I mean? Like that, you not only you could schedule well within the state, but you could recruit within the state. Right. And I mean, I'm a Virginia girl. So, you know, I think a lot of times too, when you play for your home state and you coach for your home state, it's, it's almost like your own territory. So you have to defend it. And I think um, a lot of, a lot of players at JMU and even at, you know, Virginia Tech and, and UVA and Liberty and Longwood, they've had a lot of Virginia players that have been big time players for them. I mean, if you kind of take a look at the history of our program, our full, four All-Americans are all Virginia kids, you know, Jalen Ford, Kate and Megan Good um, and Odyssey. 
Um, and you did, they just play with a little bit more um, when, when they can play for me. Yeah, I would say so. And, uh, you know, and it also helps you got great facilities, by the way, too, uh, at your place in particular, which is obviously going to be a big help and, again, helps you host regionals like you have in the past and will help you here as you make the move, I'm sure, to the Sun Belt. Uh, you know, to host conference tournaments there as well. And uh, part of this kind of helping this transition as well, because I'm sure when you take a recruit, they're kind of blown away with your facilities. They are, and we're getting more upgrades. So that's Ooh. always exciting. <laughs> um, so we're getting a renovation for our locker room, um, our entryway to um, kind of our lobby, um, uh, new weight room equipment, um, and then we're getting seating expansion. So we are very excited as a program um, to, to get some of the, you know, we do. We have a great facility. Our space is good. Um, we just needed a, a little bit of a facelift in some areas and getting that. So super excited and, and can't thank, um, you know, the university enough for, for, you know, approving some things. What's the timetable on that? That's incredible news. And I'm happy to see, hear that more and more we're hearing this from a, a lot of different schools, you know, stepping in on facilities, which was not always the case. Uh, tells you the growth of the game. And I think schools now realize how important softball is. But what's kind of the timetable uh, from your standpoint on the renovations there? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think we were the third or fourth sport to be, you know, on the, as far as ratings. So, I mean, football has become a very, very big sport, um, you know, country. Um, we are hoping um, to get our locker room. They're going to start knocking walls down um, at a better break. Um, so we have like a temporary space that we can go. Um, and that, you know, hopefully like middle of spring, that's going to be done. And then the seating expansion um, is going to be done um, over the summer. We're going to start um, summer um, when we get done. Our so um, very excited about that and, and it happening so quickly. Because sometimes it gets approved and it takes some time, you know, and especially now with everything. I mean, if you if you drive around our campus right now, um, there's so much going on. JMU is doing so much and just approving and approve, improving the overall city and and for our our students so that's always exciting so yeah i mean it's it's gonna be happening pretty soon um so locker room will be first weight room will be also over over break that winter break time um and then the seating expansion stadium renovation over the summer that's incredible well deserved and and as we talked at the beginning of this you're a softball brand you're a softball school uh in a yep. lot of ways and i think keith gill mentioned that in that presser it all goes back to that you've been a lasting import last thing Obviously, between now and February, there's a lot of things that have to happen with this group. You bonding. What are some of the keys for this team uh, to accomplish your internal goals? What are some of the key factors that has to happen with this group to be successful in their in, in, in internally here and, and accomplish your goals here in 2022? Yeah, um, you know they they have to they have to buy into what we're doing here, which I'm already doing an incredible job at that. Um, I think. They um, have to play with who, the, you know, who they are. Like, they can't try to be someone else. They can't try to be the teams in the past. Like, they have to be who they are um, and, and grind just like we have. Um, you know, I think that's the biggest look at the years. We're pretty gritty, um, and that's the same um, personality that we want to be as a team. So be gritty. Always, you know, play, like you said, with that kind of chip on your shoulder. Um, like, we have something to prove, um, and I think that's going to be very important. And just like. Understanding there's a lot more than and than just talent, you know, that's gonna get you very far. Or like they have to bond, they have to respect each other and, and you know, um keep that same kind of culture feel love for one another, um, and, and stay tight um throughout the whole season, no matter what happens. You know, um it's easy when you win, but man, is it hard, you know, to stay together when you lose and, and not kind of start separating. So I think that's gonna be very, very important um when we have some adversity and is being so young, they have to figure out a way to stay together um, and, and get through it. Well, we look forward to seeing this young group. And I think a lot of people will be watching your program very closely. I think you gained a lot of fans during your run in the last put in the postseason run to the Women's College World Series. And I think that'll only continue to grow as this university continues to grow as they're going to be moving to the Sun Belt down the road. Uh, Lauren Laporte joining us here on In the Circle. Always a pleasure to uh, talk to you. I appreciate you taking the time. It's always hectic. I don't know. It always works out where it's always hectic around you. Maybe that's just maybe that's a good thing, though. Success seems to follow that. So uh, always appreciative of you coming on the show as always. I know it's always a busy time and uh, we'll definitely I'll see you down the road uh, during the season. Well, thank you so 
so much for having me and supporting this sport like you do. Um, you're one of the big names now um, in, in this sport for all that you do.